Dear graduating students, family members, and friends, dear members of the faculty, staff, and of the larger Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health fa faculty. What a day this is. I am delighted to be among the first to congratulate the classes of 2017, soon to join the ranks of Harvard Chan's alumni. This is my first year as dean. You are the first class. the first class that I have the honor of sending into the world. I could not be more proud. I also want to congratulate the countless others who helped to make this day possible. So many family members, friends, teachers, mentors, and so many other supporters. I congratulate you and I thank you. Many of you are here today hearts bursting with pride. Others equally loving and loved are unable to be with us. That is true every year, of course. But this year is different. Along with unusual reasons, with the usual reasons, costs, distance, sickness, unavoidable conflicts, new political realities have erected new and disturbing hurdles for us. As we celebrate, I ask, let us also keep in mind those who have been kept away. We are here for them as well as ourselves. This is their day as well. One person from our Harvard Chan family who is not here deserves special mention. His name is Muhammad Al Safadi. And he receives his MPH degree along with you all here today. Before coming to Harvard, Dr. Al Safadi managed medical projects in Qatar Red Crescent International in Nepal, in Turkey, in Syria, in Lebanon, as well as in his native Jordan. The programs he oversaw served refugees, earthquake victims, and others in desperate care of need. Ordinarily, Dr. Al Safadi would be seated among this year's graduating class. He would be sitting with you, his classmates, and his friends. But issues related to his visa barred him from returning to the United States from a winter session trip taken to Jordan. As a result, he went to extraordinary lengths to complete his degree via long distance. He had hoped to return for commencement, but we recently learned that his visa application was again rejected. These are challenging times. I don't need to tell you all that. So many things we hold dear are now under threat. The vision of a peaceful world where everyone's basic needs are met where affordable health care is recognized as a basic right is under threat. The core democratic values of diversity, free expression, fairness, and inclusion, principles that belong at the heart of our national identity, are at risk. The belief that with privilege comes responsibility both to the present and to future generation, is threatened. 
the primacy of science along with the belief that public policy must be grounded in evidence, not prejudice or emotion, is a concern. We are the first class, you are the first class, to graduate into this new reality, an era that began in November's US elections. I know you feel this deeply. I also know that you are up to the challenges being faced, that the world will be a far better place for what you bring to it. How do I know this? I know this because I have watched you. I have seen anger and despair evolve into determination. I have seen your passion, your commitment, your brilliance reflected throughout our school in ways both large and small. I have seen it in your service and activism, your weekly teach-ins and phone banks, your participation in the March for Science and other public events, your engagement in student organizations that seek to improve both this school and the larger world. I have seen it in the many ways you supported each other, not the least of which is how you rallied around Mohammed after he was barred from returning to this country. You saw that he had class notes. You even Skyped with him and Skyped him into lectures. I have seen it in your work your work to expand health care for those who need it most, from Haiti to Angola, from New Jersey to Mexico, and of course, right here in Boston. You have combined your study of public health with your commitment to public health service. In these ways, and so many more, you have shown awareness that public health is far more than a profession, far more than an academic discipline. Public health is a movement. Nevertheless, this has been more apparent, no more apparent than it is today. In the words of writer, Rebecca, Sol Rebecca Solnik, we write history with our feet and with our presence and our collective voice and vision. Among those showing the way, here is today's commencement speaker, Gina McCarthy. Gina McCarthy served as EPA commissioner under President Barack Obama. In recent months, she has used her public profile to defend the science of climate change and denounce efforts to turn back the clock on environmental protections. Now more than ever, we need to build on such stellar leadership to rise, to raise the public voice of public health. How do we reach people and change minds? What are the most productive ways to stand up for our values? These are questions that we have to confront. In their answers lies the future of the public health movement. Every one of you is part of this movement. As graduates of this great school, you take your place in an extraordinary lineage of public health activists, visionaries, and educators. One of the earliest public health activists and visionary was Alice Hamilton, who in 1919 became Harvard's first female faculty member. A pacifist and advocate for women's rights, Hamilton conducted groundbreaking research on dangerous workplace conditions. She began her teaching career in Chicago, 
drawn by the opportunity to live with immigrants and the poor in Jane Addams' legendary Hull House. Looking back on her early life, at the age of 88, she had this to say, and I quote, for me, the satisfaction is that things are better now, and I had some part in it. Another great inspiration is the late Jonathan Mann, the founding director of our FXB Center and the first head of the World Health Organization's global programs on AIDS. Dr. Mann brought together the worlds of health and science with human rights, fields that until then had little to do with each other. He cast light on public health dangers posed by silence, exclusion, and isolation. Work has resonant today as it was in the 1980s. I think, too, of many Harvard Chan alumni who are, who are at work now today in the field. Of Monica Burrell, a member of the class of 2012, who now serves as the state's commissioner of public health and has trained her sites on combating opioid abuse and health disparities. I also think of Willie Parker, a member of the class of 1998, who has emerged as a champion of reproductive health choice in the Deep South, often flying in from out of state to serve women in need. I also think of Annie Sparrow, a member of the class of 2004, who travels back and forth from New York to Syria's Turkish borders, where she trains medical providers on the front lines of the nation's bloody civil war. And the list goes on and on. Now it is your turn. It is your turn and your time to take up the torch. What a force you are with your brilliance, your brilliant minds, your fierce conviction, and your rich diversity. Altogether, 684 of you receive degrees today. You come from all over the world, from 70 countries, and from 38 states across this United States, plus the District of Columbia. You are receiving a wide range of degrees, a reflection of the vast ranges of gifts that you bring to this world. 38, 34 of you receiving doctors of philosophy, eight of you receiving doctors of public health, the first of our students to receive this newly redesigned degree. 59 of you receiving doctors of science. 414 masters of public health, including the first 48 graduates of our new blended MPH in epidemiology degree. 159 receiving masters of science and 10 masters of arts. An impressive in talent and in quantity. As you step into this next chapter, each one of you will face rare challenges, but also opportunities. Events have shocked us into action and into a new solidarity and sense of shared mission. This is a resource of a tremendous power, ours to use or squander. If there is one quality these times demand, it is agility. Agility, a word that I have thought of a lot throughout this academic year. 
Agility means, for me and for many of us, the capacity to see openings and quickly act on them. And I witnessed you all being agile during times of distress during this academic year. Agility also means to think creatively and to leverage circumstances. And I saw you all respond with great agility during this academic year. To this end, I urge you to continue to seek common ground with those you may be tempted to write off. In a world as polarized as ours is today, this can feel daunting. It is daunting, but I also think it's essential. The emblem of this year's festivities is a light bulb. This is a part of a playful tradition. Sorry for Walter Willett, we don't have fruits this year. <laughs> but these foam light bulbs that many of you received this morning are our symbol for this year. And that said, as I prepare to send you off, I also see a deeper meaning in the symbol. These lights stand for power. They stand for hope. Those lights are you. I often think of these words from one of my favorite writers, Maya Angelou. She wrote, when you learn, teach. When you get, give. As graduates of this great school, you have learned much, received much, and you have so much to share. Few of us expected the events of last November, and most of us continue to grapple, grapple with what they mean and what they call on us to do. And while I don't have all the answers, I do know this, you are the future of public health, of the public health movement. This world will be a far better place for your contributions. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our student speaker this afternoon, William Seligman. This accomplished scholar is a doctor who is receiving his Master's of Public Health degree in health policy this afternoon. Before I ask William to step up to the podium, let me tell you a little bit about him. He graduated from the University of Oxford Medical School in 2014 and worked as a physician in Southwest England until beginning his studies at Harvard last year. His clinical focus, his critical care medicine, and major trauma. With a mother from New Orleans, Williams has roots on both sides of the Atlantic. He also has long-standing interests in U.S. health policy. He interned in the United States Senate during a summer break from medical school. And he was involved in health policy in the United Kingdom, spending time experiencing policymaking at the highest level with the government's chief medical officer. As co-chair of the British Medical Association's Medical Students Committee, he represented medical students to the government on a range of issues. During his time here, while working towards his MPH, William attended classes focusing on health policy and management at the Harvard Chan School, at the Harvard Kennedy School, and Harvard Business School, taking full advantage of Harvard's opportunities for cross-disciplinary learning. In addition to his academic studies, 
William spent time on a number of Boston healthcare organizations, including Mass General Hospital and the International Consortium for Health Outcomes Measurements. He also served as a teaching assistant and research assistant and as co-chair of the Student Recruitment Committee at the Harvard Chan School. I don't think he slept. In addition, he served on the Office of Alumni Affairs and Career Advancements Student Advisory Committee. And he is a member of the Awards Committee for the Harvard T.H. Chan School's Public Health Alumni Association. Looking to the future, in addition to hoping that William gets some sleep, he plans to put the skills and knowledge he has developed at Harvard to good use in a joint clinical and policy role in England's National Health Service. Please join me in welcoming today's student speaker, William Seligman. Thank you. Wow. Look at this huge crowd. <laughs> Truly. Believe me. This has got to be the most bigly crowd America has ever seen. In fact, I think it's, it's the biggest crowd. You've got to agree. Barack Obama agrees. Hillary agrees. Putin agrees, the whole world agrees, <laughs> truly, believe me, <laughs> truly. <laughs> Greetings to Dean Williams, former EPA administrator, Gina McCarthy, faculty, staff, and alumni. And to the class of 2017, congratulations Congratulations also and welcome to our parents, friends, and loved ones, without whom we wouldn't be here today. Now, when we told our families we were first applying to study at Harvard, while of course they were all delighted, I'm sure a question that they, we were all asked was, what is public health? It's the same question we asked ourselves on our first day of classes. Public health is what brought us together from around the world, and it's what unites us today in these difficult times. Yet few of us have the same answer to this seemingly simple question. And that I can't provide a definition of public health that would mean the same to all of us is because I think that public health is more than a discipline. It's also an aspiration, the state of the public being healthy, now, on the face of it, you'd think we could all define something as simple as that. Yet public health is often invisible. When it works, we don't read about it. We don't read about how the water we drink not only hydrates us, but also prevents our teeth from decaying. We don't read about the number of lives saved by surveillance workers during an outbreak of an infectious disease. But our lack of public health is clear for all to see. Every day as I cycle on the streets between Cambridge and here, the very same journey we've all bravely made this morning in the pouring rain, we see people who call these streets their home. Scarred from sleeping rough, their suffering is a constant reminder of our lack of public health. So too is the fact that a baby born right here today can expect to live 30 years longer than a child born just two miles south of here. That was 30 years. And if I asked you to explain this horrible racial disparity, I'd likely hear a number of reasons. Poor nutrition, substance misuse, smoking, gun violence, poor access to medical care, and to education. 
Tackling problems as great as these requires a diverse group of individuals with different skills and knowledge. And that's exactly what I see when I look at the people graduating today. I see researchers, policymakers, philosophers, servicewomen, physicians, basic scientists, educators, consultants, and many, many more. While each of us may approach problems from different perspectives, we are united in our commitment to improving the public's health. And this school has given us a set of common skills and the resilience and inspiration to get out there, prevent disease, and promote health. But public health is about more than just bringing people together from different backgrounds. It's also about serving others. We are fortunate to have the health, resources, and support to be here. Lucky to be educated individuals at the best public health school in the world. Few have had greater choice in the directions our lives could take. And so while our talents may be arbitrary, our choices are not. And we have chosen to answer our call to serve. Now, something Harvard students do particularly well is social media. And I want to try something out with you today. There's a guy called Mark from a website you might have heard of called Facebook, who's speaking roughly about now across the river in Cambridge. Well, I'm sure my buddy Mark has attracted a few of the public health crowd to his talk, and shame on them. <laughs> for them, for Mark, and for all of our family and friends who, for whatever reason, can't be with us today, I want you to get out your phones right now. I know the program says you shouldn't, but you can. <laughs> I want you to get out your phones, and I want you to take a picture of the beautiful flags in this tent. And I want you to upload your pictures to Facebook, Instagram, whichever social media site takes your fancy, using the hashtag HarvardChan17. And I want you to put a particular caption on these photos. And the caption is, talents are arbitrary, choices are not. The pictures you're taking now represent just a fraction of the diversity of the people who have been brought together by this school. So yes, public health unites us. And yes, it's about serving others. But more than that, it's an aspiration, a journey to which we commit ourselves today. And I know that each and every one of you will do your bit so that we can all, regardless of where we come from or the opportunities we, we may have had, get there one day. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker, Gina McCarthy. Gina McCarthy is the former administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency. In a long and distinguished career on the front lines of government and environmental affairs, Gina has demonstrated again and again how much you can achieve when you hold to the courage of your convictions, follow scientific evidence where it leads, and maintain a good sense of humor and willingness to engage with people you may not agree with. She is also widely recognized as a leader who has never believed that a clean environment and a strong economy are mutually exclusive. Gina began her career as a public health professional working with boards of health in two Massachusetts towns. She went on to serve as Deputy Secretary 
of the Massachusetts Office of the Commonwealth Development and as Undersecretary for Policy for the Massachusetts Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. Known for her expertise and not for any partisan leader, leadings, leanings, she was an environmental advisor to Democratic and Republican governors of Massachusetts, including Mitt Ron Romney. She later served as commissioner of the Con Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection under a Republican governor. In 2009, she left New England for Washington, D.C. when Perez President Barack Obama named her assistant administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency's Office of Air and Radiation. Four years later, she was tapped to take over the EPA as the administrator. During her time at the EPA, Gina and her colleagues held fast to one fundamental principle, that science is the bedrock of environmental policy making. This principle led the agency to issue rules creating stricter air quality standards, cutting carbon dioxide emissions from new cars, and requiring greenhouse gas cuts to major new facilities, among others. Gina led the creation of the groundbreaking Clean Power Plan, which is designed to address emissions from existing power plants. She also fought for clean water, increases in the use of renewable energy, and improved efficiency standards for homes and buildings. As Gina has noted, the EPA is not about creating regulations for regulation's sake. It is, in fact, one of the top public health organizations in the world. The EPA's efforts have helped save thousands of lives every year, and longstanding EPA regulations, such as the Clean Air Act, which are based in part on research done right here at the Harvard Chan School, have been credited with preventing hundreds of thousands of premature deaths while generating economic returns of more than 30 to 1. A native of Boston, Gina received her bachelor's degree in social anthropology from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. She also received a joint master's of science in environmental health, engineering, and plan planning and policy from Tufts University. At the Harvard Chan School this spring, she served as the Richard and Rone Menschel Senior Leadership Fellow. She was also an Institute of Politics Fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School. A popular speaker here at Harvard, Last year, she received the Horizon Award for Environmental Leadership from the Harvard Environmental Law Program, among many other honors. For public health practitioners and researchers, these are challenging and unsettling times. Environmental science is under particular threat, but few understand as well as Gina does how to get things done in this type of political climate. So I have no doubt that with good humor and the courage of her convictions, Gina will continue working for common sense policies rooted in science that protect the environment as well as public health. Please join me in welcoming former EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy. I'd like to begin with a science statement. This is totally climate change, all this rain. <laughs> all right, all of you are gonna say absolutely not. You can't say things like that. Okay, 
Well, th thank you, Dean Williams. I really appreciate it that you have invited me here today. Uh, perhaps uh, more importantly, I want to thank you for giving me a job. And I want to thank the faculty here for allowing me to be tend to be part of the faculty for a few uh, months. It was really cool. It's going to be on my resume forever. <laughs> I said that like a New Yorker, didn't I? This is way too loud. Can you tone that down? I can't tone myself down, so we, we need to use mechanics to do it. Um, I am uh, also uh, grateful uh, for all of the work that's gone on at this institution and the men and women who have really walked the halls of this institution, who have changed how we see and how we solve our greatest public health challenges. That better? All right. You could have told me that a couple of minutes ago. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about the old leaders. I'm here to talk about the new ones, class of 2017. Will you clap for yourselves? Congratulations. And I am here to talk to the moms and the dads and the brothers and the sisters and the spouses and the partners and the children who are here today. Congratulations to you, too. Thank you for putting up with the insufferable I go to Harvard as an excuse for being just too damn lazy to take out the trash. Or the recyclables, I should say. But I was especially proud to have stood with so many of you, scientists both young and old, a few weeks ago at the Boston's March for Science. I don't know about you, but I just love the signs. One of them said, society should worry when geeks have to demonstrate. Couldn't agree more. Another said, got polio, me neither. Thanks, science. It is clever, right? Well, scientists really do have to be clever these days because they're not just being asked to conduct really important research, but they're being told that they have to professionally and personally defend that research. Even the way science is conducted is under threat of political interference. So get ready, graduates. You'll need to be prepared to speak truth to power, as we said in the 60s and 70s. Get ready. Or at least you need to speak English as a supplement to science talk. <laughs> but don't worry, I have great hope that science as we know it will not only survive, but continue to make a positive difference in our world. And I have faith in you, the graduates of 2017, and this great institution, in your ability to shape our future. I have spent time with some of you, and I still have faith. Can you believe it? After all, you are standing on the shoulders of great scientists who came before you. And we have all benefited from the tremendous contributions that they have made to this country and the world. Wasn't that really what the Science March was all about? That we were gathering not as individuals but as scientists to ensure that our collective voices were heard about the need for continued investment in science as the foundation of our future progress. You and I share a love for public health and a passion for the science that defines the challenges we face and that designs the solutions as well. After all, EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is a public health agency. And the work you do underpins so many of EPA's policies, our programs, our rules, investments that have saved literally millions of lives. And if all goes well, we'll continue to save those millions as long as those protections are in place. Grads, you have exciting opportunities ahead of you to make a positive impact in the world. And you have an absolute obligation to try to do that. Because that is what a Harvard THTN education is all about. You don't just learn, but you serve through that learning. It's become clear to me as I've worked at each level of government that people everywhere are just desperately looking for trusted, independent advisors who can help them understand the world they live in, the risks they may be facing, and how do they keep themselves and their families healthy and safe. Unfortunately, in many ways, government is no longer viewed as that trusted, independent advisor that folks can, can, can really embrace. Partisan rancor, 
have led people to question what is fact and what is fiction. Old folks in this audience will remember it's just like the Memorex commercial, right? Is it real or is it Memorex? I don't know. But people still value and will increasingly depend on experts like you. Scientists who are mission driven, not special interest driven. Scientists who are accountable, not just for the research that you deliver, but for the transparent, fair, and unbiased process that you follow. Today, social media provides an incredible opportunity to share a wealth of vital information and to bring people together but far too often it is used to spread alternative facts and to drive people apart. It has provided an easy vehicle for non-scientists to call into question science that is absolutely essential to help guide critical decisions that are gonna matter about your health and your future. Things like climate change science. For example, when climate scientists have said climate warming trends over the past century are extremely likely due to human activities. I don't like that sentence, but that's what they say. Climate deniers use this precise language to make the case that scientists really aren't sure. It's just some kind of a crapshoot, right? And then when scientists made the extraordinarily interesting point always that follows, that science is constantly evolving. Duh. They say that all the time. I have no idea why the hell one has to say that. Of course it is. But when you say it in the context with that first one, you not only don't know what you're talking about, but let's sit around and wait till science settles out. That's how it's used, folks. That's the challenge that we face. Because we all know that science is constantly evolving. But when you go up to someone, it's sort of like going up to someone and saying, so how are you today? They say, I'm fine but my cells are constantly changing, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna be the next sentence. <laughs> Stop talking like that. Of course you know you're fine. Whatever happens, you could get hit by a car the next day. What do you know? So here's an idea. What if we just say that scientists have concluded that there is overwhelming evidence that climate change is real, men are causing it, and that's why women need to run the world. That's a science thing. I thought you might like that one. <laughs> All right, maybe I got carried away a little bit, but you do know that anthropogenic emissions technically mean man-made, and women, none of us were in charge when all these stupid decisions were made, so I am not owning it, you don't have to own it, but we all have to collectively fix it. That's the way that it works. And until we get equal pay for equal work, that will remain the case. Thank you. You know, climate science is complicated. I know why you say things the way you do, but despite that fact, we can say with absolute clarity that climate change demands immediate action to avoid what is essentially the most significant existential challenge of our time. So we can't sit quietly and let language of science, like I just articulated, be misinterpreted in ways that misrepresent the facts. Graduates, today it's just not good enough for you to decide what you stand for. You have to decide what, decide what you will not stand for. That's what you have to do. It's not enough to do science. You have to speak for the science in ways that non-scientists, AKA real people, can understand. You might even have to march for science, not because you wanna get political, but just the opposite. You cannot allow science to be politicized. Period, end of story. So as young scientists, Right now, well, no, not right now, because you've got lots of other stuff on, but take off your lab coats <laughs> and start practicing this. Go out and talk to people about what you do in the lab, what you learn in the library. Tell them what you know and what it really means to them and to their families. Then see that something remarkable will happen. 
because that is what I have done for a living for 37 years. And I think you will be really excited to know that facts actually do matter to people, that people can and want to learn, that by and large people will make good decisions if you arm them with good, solid facts. And when people speak with very clear conviction in this country, policymakers and politicians will, albeit many of them reluctantly, they will listen. And when they do, they will once again protect the core values that you and I hold dear, like clean air, clean water, healthy land, and a stable planet. So we need to speak, and we need to speak loudly. <laughs> Graduates, in my opinion, and this is just me, you are the most informed, tech-savvy generation in history. But the most interesting thing that I see is that you have an inherent sense of equity and social justice that I think is unmatched. And I truly hope that it's unwavering because too many people in too many countries around the world, and even in the US, they suffer because they have been left behind from the benefits that many of the rest of us enjoy. And that has to change. Hello, is that my mother? She keeps, she's always annoying me during this. But listen, that's why you came here, to find out how you can help strengthen the science foundation needed to protect the most vulnerable. That is our job. So thank you on behalf of all the air breathers and water drinkers out there, especially all those who put a little bit of scotch in their water. Thanks. Thanks for taking on the task of helping us stay safe and healthy. And thanks to all of you who are fighting against a proposed federal budget that clearly has made absolutely no room for investment in science because science continues to be the engine that drives American prosperity and innovation and that fuels global progress. You know, my time at EPA taught me very clearly that science was not just our professor, but it was our protector. Today, because of science, much of it produced in the hallowed halls at Harvard. <laughs> Smoking deaths are down. Lead in our kids' blood has plummeted. The ozone layer is healing, and dangerous levels of NOx, SOx, CO, PM, and acid rain have been declining for decades. But I need only say Flint, Michigan, to remind you that there is a hell of a lot of work left to be done. But I am confident that if you keep providing sound science to guide the way, in the long run, in the long run, EPA will keep continuing to steer America away from health risk and toward a higher quality of life. You know, the way I see it, critics on Capitol Hill who have filed bills to stop EPA from considering the very best science and to change the peer review process so that industry can have a deciding voice. Well, they are playing a very dangerous game. When they get sick, I bet they run the doctors and hospitals right around here that rely on science from Harvard. I bet they want to hear from, from scientists, not industry trade groups, about the risks they may be facing from contaminants in their drinking water or pollution in the soil next door to their homes. I bet they even check out the daily air quality forecast from EPA and the National Weather Service because their kids have asthma and they want to know whether they should go out and play or not. And by the way, one in 10 kids in this country is suffering from asthma, and two out of 10 in the Hispanic community are suffering from asthma. That's called disparity. That can't continue. The simple fact is people in government and businesses. They depend on agencies across the federal government because our science is reliable and our world-class scientists are world-class. <laughs> and pollution does not discriminate across party lines. In fact, the efforts to the protect the environment have until recent years been bipartisan. Just think about it. Teddy Roosevelt, National Park System, Richard Nixon, Creator of the EPA, that's his best feature. <laughs> George H. Bush, 
the Clean Air Act amendments of 1990, perhaps the most significant public health law of our time. Well, I worked for five Republican governors, and I worked for one Democrat, and many would argue that New England actually doesn't have Republicans, and I might agree with that, actually. But they were as Republican as they get, and I can honestly say that in each and every one of those administrations, we made tremendous progress because they respected the science. They had the courage to consider it when they made decisions, and they didn't delay the tough ones. We have to get back to bipartisan support for science and environmental protection. We can't allow anyone to reject set facts simply because they're incongruous with what their party politics are supposed to think or say. As Neil deGrasse Tyson has said, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe it. I don't really know what that means, but it's good, and he has a great voice. <laughs> and it remains fundamental to the protection of public health and our planet that we pay attention to those old, worn out, and unsupported arguments that science-driven policies of EPA have come with unbearable economic costs. Well, they're as empty as the expertise of those who are shouting those words into the wind. <laughs> the truth is, when you follow the science and the law, history has shown that it's good for the planet and our pocketbooks, it's good for consumers, and it's good for companies. The point is, we will not sacrifice a healthy environment for a healthy economy. We don't have to, and we won't. That's what you bring to the table. That's what you have to talk about. And today, the excellent thing is, even though we may all be disappointed in this administration, with the advent of markets where you win if you're renewable energy and energy efficiency, you market win, then we know that the clean energy train in this country has left the station and no one person, not even the President of the United States, can turn it around. We know that it's the economy stupid when we do it right. So that's why many states who are actually suing us on the Clean Power Plan are doing better than we asked them to do in 2022. So get over it. <laughs> we can take a big step forward on climate change. We can make it work. We can combine it with great standards on air. We can make our lives better and keep our planet stable and protect our kids' future. This is what happens when you do sound science, when you communicate it effectively, and when leaders actually listen. So graduates, Keep your foot on the gas. Put your faith in American ingenuity and entrepreneurship. That is what we do best. That is how we roll in this country. And this four years is never going to change that. You can't let it and I won't let it. Because a clean, healthy environment, it's not window dressing. It's a basic human right and it's the foundation of our economy. So at times like these, when public officials consider bills that undermine the science, budgets that eliminate critical investments, throw snowballs on the Senate floor to disprove global warming, that was a good one, or take other steps to undermine public health for personal gains, it just has to be a stark reminder of the importance of our obligation to clearly and persistently convey what science tells us, why it matters, and what we can do about it. But you know what? I'm not getting discouraged, so you have no right to get discouraged. You can't get discouraged, and you cannot engage. Just the opposite. It is not hopeless. It is far from it. These science bills are on the radar screen of good senators. We'll keep fighting on the budget, even though it remains a significant issue. Executive orders don't trump rules, pun intended, but it's true. They have to do a rule to replace a rule, and that is not going to be easy for an administration since they don't seem particularly enamored by environmental laws or particularly attention, uh, I should say, a little bit of attention deficit disorder when it comes to science. Instead, what's happening in D.C. has to be a rallying cry. It has to be time for you to do what my dad always told me to do. You have to fight the good fight. You have to pull up your big girl and big boy pants. You have to stop whining, and you have to start acting. Because if you do, we will win. 
We will maintain these protections and we'll continue to move forward. Now, I've seen the work that can happen at TH Chan. I am so incredibly hopeful because of people like Dr. Jeff Vogel. He was a Harvard MPH from just last year. He created an app called Recover Me to better aid people from suf suffering from workplace injuries. And there are so many others. I have hope because of Catlin Powers. Do you know Catlin? She was a Harvard MPH from 2011 who created a solar cooker to address the deadly challenge of indoor air pollution in the developing world. And I have hope thanks to Karima Ladhani, a Harvard MPH from 2013, there you go, who launched a baby box initiative in South Asia helping to save infants and mothers' lives. There are so many small and large stories like these, including breakthroughs like the six city studies that give me hope and should give you energy as you move forward. So let me thank you again personally for choosing to do this work, for being an inspiration as to what can be when you're fed up with what is, for thinking about health not as an individual luxury, but as a public necessity, one that calls on the best and the brightest minds, ones that deserve to be defended at all cost. You know, there's another sign that stuck with me that at the Science March, and it simply said, science needs heroes. So lastly, let me ask you to be that hero. Be someone's trusted independent advisor. Be what President Kennedy once said, a public servant who really cares and cherishes the people that they serve. He also once said, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard. So you didn't come to Harvard because it was easy. You came here because you wanted to do something special with your life. So live the rest of your life as if you were still here at THGN, learning and discovering. Because our world just might depend on it. Congratulations, everyone, and best of luck. realize now that I should have told you all to buckle your seat belts. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. As is our tradition at commencement, we ask a representative of the school's alumni association to bring official greetings to you, to you all, as our newest alumni. This is therefore my honor to introduce Dr. Sameth Al-Saharti, President of the Alumni Council. Sameth is a medical doctor and international public health specialist who has worked at the World Bank for nearly 20 years. He is program leader for human development in the Gulf Corporation Council countries, the Middle East, and North Africa region. In this role, he leads health policy dialogue and strategy and manages programs and projects in more than 22 countries. He is also an adjunct assistant professor of international health at Georgetown University. His most recent work has focused on non-communicable disease, cross-sector health policies, governance and implementation, and delivery science. As a foundation for this remarkable international public health career, Sameth received his MPH in International Health Policy and Management from our Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health in 1991. I am delighted to invite Dr. Sameth El Saharti to deliver the alumni greetings. Welcome, Sameth. Uh, 
thank you, Dean Williams, graduates of the class of 2017, proud parents and families, honored guests and friends, fellow alumni, esteemed faculty and staff, Honorable Dean Williams, and distinguished commencement speaker, Ms. McCarthy. As president of the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health Alumni Association, I am honored to congratulate you and welcome you as new members of our Alumni Association on behalf of more than 13,000 members who came before you. You are graduating fully equipped with the state-of-the-art knowledge and cutting-edge skills that are necessary to tackle the emerging public health challenges and save and improve the lives of millions of people around the globe. Never before public health was public health at the center of development as it is nowadays, believe me. It intersects with human, social, and economic development in all countries, high income, middle income, and low income countries alike. Improving health is not only an end in itself, but also a means to achieving other social and economic development goals. For example, good health in childhood enhances cognitive functions and reduces school absenteeism and early dropout rates. Children with better health can be expected to attain higher educational levels and to be more productive in the future, therefore contributing to human capital formation, which is a necessary condition for economic growth. Similarly, to improve health outcomes, we need to address the underlying social determinants of health, which are responsible for about 70% of the population's health. These include socioeconomic factors, environmental factors, health behavior factors, as well as physical environment conditions. Also, there is strong evidence that investing in health matters for a range of economic outcomes, such as wages, earnings, productivity, labor force participation, retirement, as well as labor supply. So, as you walk out with your degrees and think about what you will do, think big. Think how you are going to contribute to the bigger cause of human well-being. Class of 2017, I take this opportunity to welcome you not only to the profession, but to join a vibrant alumni association. Your engagement with the Alumni Association will provide you with great resources and access to a large network of alumni across the globe. For example, our Career Advancement Committee works to enable and support alumni in exploring new career opportunities and strengthen ties with current students. Our Professional Development Committee aims at providing and connecting alumni with resources to develop their technical and managerial skills. And our global alumni network aims at expanding and connecting the alumni network globally to each other, to the Harvard Chan School, and Harvard as a whole. So I urge you to join one of our committees, engage in our events, and consider running for leadership positions on the Alumni Council. As you enter your next phase of professional life, I hope you will stay connected with the school and alumni association so we can grow our network to the four corners of the world, celebrate our successes, and support each other, both socially and professionally. On behalf of the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health Alumni Association, I congratulate you once again and wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you.
you, Dr. Elsa Hardy. I have the distinct pleasure to announce this year's award winners, whose work in key areas of our school's life has been recognized by their colleagues. We start with the Harvard Chan Student Awards, which honor outstanding students through a selective nomination and committee deliberation process. This year, we recognize 19 students. As I announce each award recipient, I will ask them to stand in place and be recognized. Please hold your applause until the end. I am pleased to announce the following student awards. The Albert Schweitzer Award, Dr. John Park. The Dr. Bang Ching Sun Memorial Award, Katie Cueva. The Edgar Haber Award in Biologic Sciences, Kathleen Witter Dantzler. The Gareth M. Green Award for Excellence in Public Health, Ann Crawford Roberts, Sidra Bonner, Michelle Loaf, Nana Ya Misa, Kara Tucker Percival, Nicole Gail Tumalawan Rojas, and Ni Tu Tran. The James H. Ware Award for Achievement in the Practice of Public Health goes to Teresa Timmis. The Robert B. Reed Prize for Excellence in Biostatistical Science goes to Shihao Li. The Student Recognition Award, Ulum Fan Shah, Agba Jalau Jabi, Katrina Keegan, and Asad Trena. The Teaching Assistant Award to Avanti Adiha, Matthew Hitchens, Thomas Madsen, and Emily Slade. And the Uwe Brinkman Memorial Travel Award to Linri Luyo. Congratulations to all of our student awardees. Next, I have the opportunity to present the Teaching and Mentoring Awards based on student feedback through course evaluation questions that focus on the quality of teaching and effectiveness in the classroom for the Teaching Awards and through student nominations and committee vote for the Mentoring Awards. This year, we recognize nine faculty members. Again, I will announce each of their awards and names and ask them to stand in place and be recognized and ask you to hold your applause till the end. I'm pleased to announce the following faculty awards. The Roger L. Nichols Excellence in Teaching Award to Heather Bayer, Assistant Professor in the Department of Epidemiology. Teaching citations to Dr. William Bean, Instructor and Practicum Advisor, Dr. David Bloom, the Clarence James Gamble Professor of Economics and Demography, and Dr. Ankur Pundia, Assistant Professor of Decision Science. And this year, we are also pleased to give four mentoring awards to Dr. Gunther Fink, Associate Professor of International Health Economics, Dr. Sonia Hernandez-Diaz, Professor of Epidemiology. Dr. Sebastian Hanus, the Associate Professor of Biostatistics. And Dr. Cassandra Okachekwu, the Associate Professor of Social and Behavioral Sciences. The Outstanding Teaching and Executive and Continuing Professional Education Award goes to Dr. Lenny Marcus, Lecturer on Public Health Practice. Please join me in congratulating our faculty award. <laughs> The Sarah K. Wood Award was established by friends and admirers of Sarah K. Wood in tribute to her for many years of exceptional service to Harvard University and the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. It recognizes a staff member who demonstrates the qualities of dedication, competence, positive attitude, initiative, and ability to mentor, encourage, and inspire others, in addition to demonstrated com uh, commitment to the school and its mission. This year, the award is given to Catherine Barber, research manager and senior scientist in the Harvard Injury Control Center. Congratulations, Catherine. The Staff Recognition Award was created by the student government to ensure that members of the Harvard Chan community who are neither faculty nor students are acknowledged for their great efforts to help students at the school specifically staff members who make a significant impact on the lives of our students. This award is intended to acknowledge the importance of non-classroom and mentoring activities on the lives of our students. This year, we recognize two staff members, Amy, Wool Amy Woolridge, the Associate Director of Purposeful Work at Bates College and former Associate Director of Student Affairs at the Harvard Chan School, 
and Elizabeth Solomon, Assistant Director for Academic Affairs and Fellowship Programs in the Department of Social and Behavioral Science. Congratulations. Now each department chair or representative will read the names of the doctoral graduates from their department while the chair of the Committee on Admissions and Degrees, Dr. Marie McCormick, hoods the candidates. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce the, the recipients of the Doctor of Philosophy degree in the Division of Biological Sciences in Public Health. Lear Brace. Yongji Helen Cho. <laughs> Kathleen Dantzler. Nicole Espy. Rose Joachim. Jamila Kester. Pedro Alberto Lamont Molina. Christine Oradija. to present the 2017 doctoral degree recipient of our statistic, Shelley Liu. Huh? It is my honor to present the doctoral degree recipients in the Department of Environmental Health, Rachel Benet. <clears throat> Ryan Spencer Dias Calder. <clears throat> Kelsey Megan Gleason. <clears throat> Lin Yang Li. Pierre's Octavian McNaughton. Phoebe Laban Nissan Tawadras. Mohammed Lutfar Rahman. Jesse Tang.
Erica D. Walker. <laughs> Zhao Zhang Zhu. <laughs> Ling Zen Dai. <clears throat> I'm honored to present the doctoral degree recipient in the Department of, Departments of Environmental Health and Epidemiology, Yara Rayad Abu Awad. I am honored to present a doctoral degree recipients in the Department of Epidemiology. Bibi Alamiri. <laughs> Carla Phillips Bizot. <laughs> Choi G. Chang. Shumana Chaudhry. <laughs> Natalie Cecilia Dupree. <laughs> Yan Cheng Feng. Iris Yuri Kim. <laughs> Joshua Koyo Lin. <laughs> Benji Ma. <laughs> Yu Yung Pa. Corey Michael Peet. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Roth. <laughs> Jennifer Jacqueline Stewart. Rachel Margaret Thack. I'm now honored to present a doctoral degree recipient in the departments of epidemiology and nutrition, Dongun Li. I'm delighted and honored to uh, present the doctor degree recipients in the Department of Global Health and Population, UN Angela Chang. <laughs> Adana Chukuma. <laughs> Mahesh Venkat Kara. Irina Postolovska. <laughs> Elena Pradhan. <laughs> Carlos Javier Rumalo Hurl. <laughs> Emily Rose Smith. I'm honored to present Dr. Recipient in the Department of Nutrition, April Bonin Boeing. Uh, 
I'm honored to present Dr. De degree recipient in the Department of Nutrition and Epidemiology, Yuhan Chu. Not yet. So I'm honored to present the doctoral degree recipients in the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences, Jody Susan Anthony. <laughs> Amy Ainkholt. <laughs> Candace Hillary Feldman. Rochelle Lynn Fraunfelkel. <laughs> Jewel Marie Galsman. <laughs> Hayash Hanai. <laughs> Kelsey Elizabeth Holt. Rockley Kim. <laughs> Yongju Kim. <laughs> Jennifer Ann O'Donnell. <laughs> Jill Sue Ron Karate. Esther Elizabeth Mary Velasquez. <laughs> and Xiaoyu Li. <laughs> I'm proud to present the recipients of the doctoral degree in the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences and uh, in Nutrition, Carolyn Jean Brooks. Katie Cueva. It's my honor and privilege to present the recipients of the new Harvard Doctor of Public Health degree. Yeah. Noura Maziad Alamro. Yadira Almodovar Diaz. Yeah! Guilherme Trivelato Andrade. Yeah! Nicole Michelle Dickelson. Yeah! Jeremy Ben Lapidis. Jeffrey Reynoso. Gabriel Evan Seidman. Daniel Vicente Vigo. former Associate Dean for Student Services, will now present the Master's of Science and Master's of Public Health degrees. <laughs> Master's of Arts in Biological Sciences in Public Health, Hyun G. Justina Cho. Master of Arts in Biostatistics, 
Reginald Leibler. <laughs> Masters of Science in Biostatistics, Sumali Bajaj. <laughs> Elena Dang. Ibrahim Omar Diatkite. <laughs> Esther Fevrier. <laughs> Shirley May Galbiati. <laughs> David Yu Hyun Gong. <laughs> Yu Fei. Han Sul Kim Ye Ran Lee Melody Grace Wong Lim Ming Liu Aaron Schnellinger. Akriti Shrestha. Natalie Christine Spitzer. Stephen Joseph Steffa. Zhu Ye. Sun. Weiru Tao. Mai Li Fair. Samuel Adams Tiedemann. Christine Agnes Ulis. Yu Kuang Wei. Xiao Wu. <laughs> Zhou Yun Xiao. Ai <laughs> Shu. <laughs> Yue Jia Shu. <laughs> Zhong Chong Shu. Jabe Yang. <laughs> Ying Rui Yong. <laughs> Chu Yue Zhong. <laughs> Master of Science in Computational Biology and Quantitative Genetics, Aspa Basunia. <laughs> Jorge Eduardo Buendia Buendia. Liu Tao. <laughs> Crystal Chan. He <laughs> Lian Fong. <laughs> Ji Hua. <laughs> Nicole Da Un Li. Abhinav Kamaladine Reddy. <laughs> Benny Ren. <laughs> Wei Yu. Shi <laughs> Zhou. Master of Science in Environmental Health. Haklia <laughs> Ehlef. Yusuf Abdul Musan Al Hamad. <laughs> Jong Yi Dong. Ariane Nicole Dumas. 
Kelly Gonzalez. <laughs> Master of Science in Computational Biology and Quantitative Genetics, Yu Lei Wang. Yeah. <laughs> Master of Science in Environmental Health, Sheng Yao Zhang. <laughs> Skylar Aaron Klager. Zhong Huang. Connor Charles McGuire. Sebastian Rowland. Yen Wan Xie. Jay In. Li Zhang. <laughs> Ying Chue Hang. <laughs> Shi Hao Zhu. <laughs> Master of Science in Epidemiology, Noor Amr Al Alusi. <laughs> Leah. Geraldine Baresi. <laughs> Alexandra Lynn Bellows. <laughs> Matthias Bloom. <laughs> Anna Cameron. <laughs> Caitlin Shaolin Chen. Peter Glendon Davison. Stain Willem de Jong. Elizabeth Wicker Deemer. Darin L. Char. Michael Richard Philbin. Amy Lorraine Flynn. Christina Juliana Gall. Catherine Marie Gotro. Lena Maria Goiz Moyajin. Na Kuo. Danielle Lee Eisman. <laughs> Hiroyoshi Iwata. <laughs> Ji Huan Lee. <laughs> Shen Wei Lee. <laughs> Chen Hao Ma. <laughs> Joanna. Renee Malone. <laughs> Samson Okelo. Paul Michael Reaping. <laughs> Matthew Brian Schlenker. <laughs> Jia Xian. Ho Jin Shin. Ada Stefanescu. Florine Strop. Jenny Wei Sun. Lucy Chen Sun. Hilary Mariko Depazian. <laughs> Jenny Se. <laughs> e. Huang. <laughs> Tatum Williamson. <laughs> Yo Wu. 
Jiang Chi Ying. Qian Wei Yuan. Mu Tong Xiao. Master of Science in Global Health and Population. Canis Elizabeth Ahern. <laughs> Hayat Rashid Ahmed. <laughs> Erica Page Berlin. <laughs> Abhishek Samir Bachia. <laughs> Nina Bhattacharya. Benjamin Andrews Bigelow. Jean Juliana German Shofu. Indu Rekha Chelea. Ashley Ann Deming. Adrian Evelyn Epstein. Emily Esther Franchette. Sarah Marie Frank. Lacey Cheyenne Gibson. Charlotte Rose Greenbaum. Megan Jin Yu Huang. Sujay Srivanand Kakamath. <laughs> Katrina Ann Keegan. <laughs> Ayush Tadka. <laughs> Rachel Ann Klabundi. <laughs> Todd Patrick Lewis. <laughs> Benjamin McCormick Gellis. Andrea Martinez. <laughs> Courtney Kunin Ng. <laughs> Nicole Ariana Perales. <laughs> Dorothy Joyce Wei. <laughs> Xiao Yu. <laughs> Han Zhang. Master of Science in Healthcare Management, Charlotte Marie Egnon. Bradley Allen Arick. Ryan Michael Ash. Arif Asif. D. Eric Brush. George Paul Buldo. Craig Edward DeVoe. Mazen Jamil El Sayed. Richard J. Kim. Eli Malice. Wael Sayed Morad. Francis Anthony Rosinia. David Scott Shapiro. Ravinder Singh. T. Christopher Windham. Tae Shin Yu, <laughs> Master of Science in Health Policy and Management, Nicole Rachel Kozlov, <laughs> Hiroshi Matsumura, <laughs> Master of Science in Social and Behavioral Sciences, Rachel Ann Donalds, <laughs> Makiyo Iwata Maikawa, 
Regbeer Kaur. Master of Public Health, Emily Loving Aronson. Adeshewa Eseosa Adelonokun. Naomi Na Ajele Aje. Florence Anais Efflimen. Olufunso Modupe Agbalajobi. Blessing Rosemary Ayela. Nega Ahmadi. Temelola Abimbola Akenola. Matilda McIntyre Anderson. Jessalyn Putri Antono. Eddie Z. Yen Ang. Kalechi Anudokum. Dominique Yvonne Arce. Rebecca Yvonne Ariaga. Erin Elizabeth Atwood. Jonathan Adam Bati. Justin Brett Belsky. Alana Lisa Barris. Laurent Benard. Sebastian Ekahat Bayer. Mark Gregory Bigder. Jordan Patrick Bloom. Sidra Naomi Bonner. Lawrence Francis Borges. Olga Bushi. Rhea Whitney Boyd. Mayur Brahmania. Leo Edmund Brown. Agatha Kathleen Brzezinski. Daniel H. Buitfago Cabrera. Timothy Keith Button. Vikramjeet Singh Chahal. Justin Chung Kin Shan. Joe Nathan Charles. Pritha Chatterjee. Shi Nan Chen. Ashley Cheng. Yo Chen Chung. Austin Lee Chang. Calvin Ching Yi Chu. Michael Xu Yun Chin. Patrick Rave Ching. Namit Paresh Choksi. Shi Ling Chong. Hyun U Jun Chu. Elizabeth Ann Salenti. Brett Aaron Clark. Brianna Catherine Clark. Daniela Contreras Estrada. Ann Crawford Roberts. Kara Lynn Cuno. 
Lisa Michelle Zenko. Annalie D'Agusta. Elvira D'Andria. Sarah Elizabeth Deary. Meredith Dilly. Olivier Dure. Simon Dale Dryden. Guy Michael Dugan. Leanne Patrice Duhaney. Rahima Feroz Dosani. Jalil Farokh Durani. Mark Edmondson. Matthew David Egberg. Meredith Gray Albin Eichen. Helena Niem Aedi. Mfon Ekong. Peace Nena Ena. Olowun Tobi Yuwondi Erin Osho. Timothy Feeney, Claire Flanagan, Juan Carlos Flores, Z. Ven Fong, Sylvia Fonseca, Carla Marie Fredericks. Soad Lineth Fuentes de Aparicio. Saba Ganai. Jennifer Melibeth Garcia Perez. Eric Nicholas Alexander Generous. Amandeep Gore Guman. Andrew Earl Giles. Peter Stewart John Gladstone. Lisa Marie Angelica Gomez. Laura Faye Goodman. Lauren Kathleen Graber. Suchita Gupta. Harley Elizabeth Gus. Anna Katinka Hakuda. Priyanka Holly. Louisa Harding Edgar. Adiba Hassan. <laughs> Hannah Herzig. <laughs> Atsushi Hirayama. <laughs> Jun Janet Ho. <laughs> Jeffrey Andrew Howe. <laughs> Tasneem. Fatima Imran. Edsel Bill Ng. Shireen El Saeed Mohammed Ismail Atta. Hirotaka Iwaki. Olivia Ruth Higgins Jagger. Lyndon Paul Colm Ellis James. Paula Lynn Johns. 
Alan Matthew Joseph. Anas Kake. Avrar Karan. Alexander Jeffrey Kavanaugh. Hedram Kazamian. Thomas Jonathan Klein. Maxwell Kligerman. Stephanie Ko. Anil P. Kumar. Rone Neme Lahad. Samuel Fay Law. Drake Glenn Lebrun. <laughs> Becky K. Yun Lee. <laughs> David Jung Pa Lee. <laughs> Sing I Lee. <laughs> Terence Lee. Lorraine Lee Ang. Richard Marvin Lee Ying. Jana Allison Lichtenfeld. Jedediah Lim. Nina Elizabeth Litton. Ho Hong Liu. Xin Yang Liu. Ya Tao Liu. Gabriel Lopez. Christian Giovanni Lopez Ramos. Michelle Stephanie Loaf. <laughs> Yelena Lukovic. <laughs> Matsarodia Potiki Linden. <laughs> Todd W. Lyons. <laughs> Zoe Claire Lisi. Lindsay Adair McFarlane. <laughs> Moria Mahanaimi. <laughs> Faith Amina Maka. <laughs> Devrat Malotra. <laughs> Raul Deepak Mali. Birinder Kaur Mangat. <laughs> Fatma Maruf. <laughs> Jonathan Michael Marin. <laughs> Adam Mills Masaryk. <laughs> Ruzbe Mashayeki. Michael Madauchi. Michael McGovern. Mavish Marani. Kenneth Allen Michelson. Tessera Mirescu. Nana Ya Misa. Julian Alexander Mitten.
Masahiro Miyaki. Rose Leonard Molina. Oluwatoba Opeyemi Monanuala. Jorge Leon Morales Quesada. Tamiko Morgan. Miguel Morita Fernandez da Silva. Hakel Azub Moises. Anne Marie Murray. Philip Michael Murray. Janad Nabi. Laura L. Neff Rogers. Truk Than Nguyen. Kotaro Nochioka. Caleb Agboni Yunusa Ochimana. Se Tat Ui. Yun Su Park. <laughs> John Jung Pa Park. <laughs> Suha Janine Patel. <laughs> Trusha Patel. <laughs> Suresh Kumar Pavanluri. Haley Francis Pennon. <laughs> Nitipong Pemaplong. <laughs> Elizabeth May Peterson. <laughs> Fiona Pinto. <laughs> Kristen Marie Lucino. Nahid Punjani. <laughs> Carolyn Currington. <laughs> Jean Ryan Quinn. <laughs> Shriek Ram. <laughs> Adriana Gabriela Ramirez. Thomas William Randall II. <laughs> Kai Ling Rao. <laughs> Evan M. Renz. <laughs> Donald Dimitri Wayne Richards, Jr. <laughs> Samantha Roche. Natalia Maria Rodriguez. <laughs> Nicole Gail Tumaliwan Rojas. <laughs> Ryan Richard Ruff. <laughs> Diane Russo. Yasuaki Sagara. Saad Salman. <laughs> Ivan Sanchez Fernandez. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Sarama. <laughs> Naoko Sasamoto. <laughs> Tarek Sawas. Andrew Roger Sawyer. 
Benjamin John Scally. Matthias Christian Schlergel. Rebecca Elizabeth Scully. William Henry Seligman. Michael Sai Lai Se. Jamie Renee Schaff. Rucha Shelgaka. Nina Monet Shinde. Nitin Srivastava. Michael Gordon Silverman. Odilson Marcos Sylvester. Barinda Singh. Chloe Spring Slocum. Gideon Piers Smith. Tony Soeongo. J. Y. Song. Julia Spendlin Allen. Adam Nicholas Spring. Christian Donald Stensland. Samuel Frederick Stolpe. Teresa Marie Strong. Sebastian Suarez. Naveen Subash. Stephanie Rebecca Susser. Noah Jacob Switzer. Eric Julian Tsai. Tomo Tomara. Chi Lung Mark Tang. Ming Yo Tang. Nicole Christine Vicente Tantoco. Mary Tate. Deep Naveen Kumar Thacker. Zi Ying Thong. <laughs> Teresa Rose Timmis. <laughs> Anesu Tongona. <laughs> Alyssa Ann Totman. <laughs> Asad Mohammed Idris Trena. Ni Tu Tran. Sabrina Sang. Eugenia Nena Nedima Uche Anya. Wajajukoma Adeyemi Ozuma. Gregoire Vesne. Tomas Sebastian Vita. Hong Ming Wong. Adrian Wong. Lawrence Antonio Wong. Man Yi Wong. Chris Yvette Wong Kielis. Naoki Yanagisawa. 
Meijin Grace Young. Xuan Yan. Marielle Christine Leilani Young. Cecilia Lapman Yu. Claire Zar Kessler. Oscar Efren Zazueta Fierro. Carla Smeta. Robert Zusterzeel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Harvard T.H. Chan class of 2017. Word I used the most this year. Wow. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Before concluding this ceremony, I would la like to ask you all to rise as a sign of our entry into the company of learned women and men. You may now move your mortarboard tassels from the right to the left. This moment marks the end of our academic year and the beginning of your life as graduates of the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. The world needs your gifts as never before. May you use your talents and education to advance the public health movement for the greater good of all. Congratulations to the class of 2017.